is 99.9% .9 guaranteed that you've heard a Requiem song from the 13th century, but you don't even realize that you know it. Um, it's called the Dies Irae, and it's the most quoted musical sequence in musical literature. The big kicker is that it's been played all throughout movies and TV shows, and it was even in a movie called Metropolis that was in, nope, sorry. That was in 1927, um, and I could be wrong, but I don't think that anybody here has ever heard of that movie at all. So I'm going to be focusing more on current movies that are more common nowadays um, and that are more popular among the general audience here. So probably the easiest and most forward example is The Shining, um, and I'm going to be completely honest. When I first watched The Shining, I, um, I can be a very patient person at times, but I skipped over the entire opening credits because it was so long. Um, so even though I skipped over it and got right into the movie, I skipped over a very important um, part. Uh, the entire opening credits was the Diaz Ira, and it foreshadowed what would eventually happen in the movie if anybody here has seen it. And Stephen King also used it in Dr. Sleep in the main title. Now there are three parts to the Requiem. There are the full statement, the stinger, and the ostinato. The opening credits of The Shining is called The Full Statement. It's kind of self-explanatory, but it basically just plays the whole thing. Uh, the stinger is the most common. It's usually accompanied by the antagonist of the film appearing or when the protagonist has an emotional moment. Um, that one is the easiest to pick up in movies, and I'll provide examples for you guys. Um, and the last one is the ostinato, which is usually plays a little in action scene, um, and it provides intensity and energy for the viewer. The last one is the hardest to pick up on because sometimes the composer of the film inverts the melody or changes it up so you can't really pick it out. Um, the melody has been in so many movies. The most recent example is Frozen 2, if anybody has seen it. Um, and Disney uses it a lot throughout their movies. And um, another popular franchise is Star Wars. Um, so before we look at The Lion King, we need to understand why the melody is in all of these films. The song isn't just thrown into movies randomly. It's very carefully placed. Um, the Dies Irae is associated with death, hence the nickname, the Four Notes of Death. Um, it was a chant that was used in funeral masses of the Roman Catholic Church. Um, the name Dies Irae is Latin, and it is translated into the Day of Wrath. Um, the lyrics, although popular, aren't used as much as the melody, but they are very important. It's the musical interpretation of the Last Judgment Day, where God judges the living and the dead and sends them to either heaven or to the pits of hell. Um, it's kind of heavy, but uh, that's what it's about. And like I said, it's been traced back to the 13th century, but it's thought to be a lot older than that. The melody of the hymn is said to be, have been created by monks in 600 AD. Um, it's unclear who actually composed the melody and the lyrics together. The church says that Pope Gregory the Great is the one to, who is credited to have written it. Um, the poem, uh, he's said to have written the poem um, when a white dove that had the musical voice of God dictated it to him in the 6th century. And others say Thomas of Solano was the one who wrote it, but he was a poet from Italy in the 13th century, and because it's so old, you know, nobody really knows who wrote it. It hasn't only been in movies either. It's also been in commercials and a couple of video game soundtracks as well. Many famous composers also sampled music. Um, Hector Berlioz had it in his Symphony Fantastique in 1830, Sergei Rachmaninoff had it in his Symphonic Dances, the third movement in 1940. Mike Oldfield had it in his Two Beer Bells in, seven, in 1973, which I just found out was the Exorcist theme song. And Mozart had it in his most famous work, The Requiem. So let's take a look at some movie scenes. Like I said, we'll be looking at The Lion King. Um, this video makes it easier for you guys to, under, to identify where the four notes are by putting the title where it starts. And you can hear it in the like, high notes. Um, so as you see in the four notes that I played earlier aren't just a random group of notes. They actually play a big role in how we understand and feel about movies and music and the hundreds of other things it's found in. 
The DSCRA has survived for more than 40 generations and will likely grow on to be in thousands of more pieces of work. I hope with this information you view the movies that you see after this with a new sense of curiosity and you search for the melody when you watch the films.